Okay guys, we are going to continue from where we stopped in our first video. Now, if you still remember, um, I asked you all to do a little homework on, uh, you have to find out uh, an alkane should at least has how many carbon in order to exhibit optical isomerism. Yes, if you have done your homework, obviously you should have known that an alkane should contain at least 7 carbons in order to exhibit optical isomerisms. So here it shows you all the structural isomers of C7H16. Now look carefully of all these 9 isomers, structural isomers in C7H16 and identify out which of these molecule has a chiral carbon atoms. As a little clue, why don't you try to, there are two actually, so why don't you try to identify? Yes, as you can expect, it is 3-methylheptane, uh, uh, hexane. Is that all? Yes, this one. 2-3-dimethylpentane. Okay. So if I were to express in the object image a uh, pair of the uh, enantiomer, so this is the expected 7 carbon, so you have the object image pair uh, from the 3-methylhexane and also from the 2,3-dimethylpentane. So this is the 7 carbons that has this optical active isomer, so hopefully you all will be able to identify it. Okay, so now finishing about isomerisms, we continue with the physical properties of alkane. So uh, as you can see, progressing down, melting point, boiling point generally increase when going down to the group. So same goes with the density, generally increase when going down to the group. Okay, so a uh, boiling point of the L, uh, alkane generally increase because all alkanes are simple covalent molecule. Uh, all alkanes are simple covalent molecule hold by weak van der Waal forces. So as the relative molecular mass or molecular size increase, the strength of the van der Waal forces also increase. So that is why higher it has a higher boiling point. Now if you compare in between the isomer, so let's say we take C5H12 just now, uh, so you have 2-methylpropane, 2-methylbutane and pentane, you can see that the boiling point increases from 2,2-dimethylpropane, 2-methylbutane and then pentane. So how can we explain this phenomenon even though they have the same molecular mass but different boiling point? So this can be due to total surface area. So we said that a straight chain molecule has a higher total surface area compared to a branch chain. So the total surface area in a 2,2-dimethylpropane is the smallest, followed by 2-methylbutane, and pentane, which is a straight chain, has a greater total surface area, therefore the highest boiling point. Okay, so hopefully you'll be able to understand why is it that the pentane has the highest boiling point. As in terms of solubility, all alkanes are considered as a non-polar molecule, so therefore they does not uh, dissolve easily in non-polar solvents, as they dissolve easily in non-polar solvents such as benzene and ether. So alkane does not form hydrogen bond in water, so alkane is described as a hydrophobic molecule. Uh, okay, so the longer the alkyl chain, uh, the insoluble it is in water. So that is all for the physical properties of alkane. So let's have a look at the chemical properties of alkane. So given to you, this is the mind map of chemical properties of alkane in terms of preparations and the reactions. So I'm going to show the simple one of how to prepare alkane. So usually an alkane can be prepared from alkene and also alkyne via hydrogenation reaction. There are definitely more ways to prepare alkane, but these two are from different compounds, so we are stressing on that. So this is for the preparation part. As for the chemical reaction part, as you can see here, so there are two there are two chemical reactions in here. We can see that one it reacts with chlorine under UV, which is a uh, uh, halogenation, and then it reacts with oxygen under heating to form carbon dioxide water. So this process is called as a combustion. So immediately let's have a look on the chemical reactions of the alkene. Uh, in terms of chemical preparations of alkane, so uh, it can be pre prepared via hydrogenation of the, uh, it can be prepared via the hydrogenations of the alkene. This is a type of electrophilic additional reaction. So your reagent used is hydrogen gas catalyzed by nickel heated at 180 degree, or if you use platinum, it is at room temperature. So this is the examples of equations for the hydrogenations. So uh, this is how you prepare hydrogenation uh, alkene from alkene. So alkyne, alkyne can also be 
uh, behave in the same way, uh, same hydrogen gas and same catalyst. Okay, so the general equation here can be expressed like this. So these are the two methods of how we prepare an alkene. Next, we are going to have a look at chemical reactions of alkene. So as we uh, described just now, alkene has two reactions. One is combustion and another one is halogenations. So the halogenations, the type of reaction is free radical substitution reactions. So all the reagent is F2, Cl2 and Br2 and our condition is ultraviolet light. So for combustions, the reactions, all of the reactions will eventually form carbon dioxide and water. And for halogenations, uh, you form a haloalkane and the HX is substituted out. So we need to explain in details that one later. Okay, so let's have a look at the first reaction, which is the combustion of organic compound. So generally, when all organic compounds were burned in excess oxygen, it will form carbon dioxide and water. So this process is an exothermic process. Huh? So all uh, process releases energy. Now, sometimes, depend on some type of the organic compound, some side product will produce, such as nitrogen gas, nitrogen oxide gas, uh, sulfur oxide, sulfur trioxide, if this is a sulfur-based compound. Yeah? Okay, so general equations for the reactions goes like this. Huh? If you have CXHY, so CXHY plus X plus Y over 4O2 give XCO2 plus Y over 2H2O. If it is a CXHYO, which is from alcohol, ether, aldehyde, or ketone, so you have CXHYO plus X plus Y over 4 minus half O2. Half O2 is due to this one. This is uh, 1 O is half O2, so you have the minus of the half. So you give XCO2 plus Y over 2H2O. Whereas uh, if you have CXHYO2, which uh, usually comes in acid or ester, so you get CXHYO2 plus Y over 4 minus 1 O2. So minus 1 is because here already got 1 O2, so you have the minus 1 out from the equation. So you still form uh, carbon dioxide and also water in the same manner. Okay, so these are the general. So here I provide some examples. If you have ethane, so this is the equation. Okay, if you have uh, pentane, so this is the equation, and octane, this is the equation. So basically, just substitute the formula into the equation, you can get the balance equation easily. So that is all for the uh, combustions of the alkene. Then we are going to continue with the halogenations of alkene. So before we continue from the halogenations, let us understand the nature of the alkene. Why is it being so inert? So uh, since alkene is a saturated hydrocarbon, so alkene is generally inert to most of the chemical reactions. That means it cannot react with sodium hydroxide, it cannot react with hydrochloric acid, acidified potassium manganate, so no effect regardless of hot or cold conditions. However, in air, under uh, heating, you burn and you form carbon dioxide water. If bromine water, no effect on dark, decolorize slowly under sunlight. And with this chlorine gas, reaction occur uh, rapidly under sunlight. So note that alkane, which is a non-polar saturated hydrocarbon, it is not able to react with ionic compound of NaOH or polar molecules such as HCl or acid 5 potassium manganate. So however, being a non-polar molecule, it reacts with oxygen. Oxygen is also non-polar, and then halogen is also non-polar, so it will react with halogen to form haloalkane. So this is what we are about to discuss, which is the halogenation of alkane. Huh? So alkanes react with halogen. This is a very important process via a free radical substitution reactions. Okay, so the general equations for the reactions can be written as RCH3 plus X2 give RCH2X plus HX, where X can be fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. So the halogenation that occurs in alkane is a spontaneous reaction with the possibility to form a multiple side product or other than the main product of haloalkane. So now later we are going to discuss what are the possibility of the side products for. So in here, students, you need to understand about the mechanism of the free radical substitution reactions that happens in the halogenation of alkane. So making use of examples, when ethane reacts with chlorine to form chloroethane and hydrochloric acid, so this reaction's mechanism can be described in three steps, starting from initiation, propagation, and termination. So in initiation, where chlorine molecules break in the form of homolytic fission, so when you break in homolytic fission under UV, you form a chlorine radical. Okay, so this is a chlorine radical. And chlorine radicals are very reactive, and this chlorine radical will tend to attack the ethane molecule. So when chlorine radical attack the ethane molecule, so you form a hydrochloric acid plus an ethyl radical. So this ethyl radical will then attack propagate 
by attacking another chlorine molecule so you form a chloroethane and a chlorine molecule so this process will keep on repeat until thousands or millions of the ethane molecule has been reacted with the chlorine radicals so now when there are a lot of ethyl radical and also chlorine radicals so together they will be terminated to each other to form back our main product which is a chloroethane so this is the three step by step of the mechanisms of three radical substitution reactions okay so hopefully uh, later you can go home and practice on your own on uh, halogenations of methane which is actually simpler so now finishing about the main three step reaction so we're going to describe the formations of multiple side products in here so the first side, one of the complicating factors of alkane halogenation is the multiple substitution always occur and therefore form multiple side products. So study of the mechanism show how it uh, shows that it is due to the formation of different radical in propagation steps. So in another words, now for example, uh, this step just now, we can see that you form a chloroethane. So what happens if chlorine radical further attack with this chloroethane? It can occur because it is a radical, so it can tends to react with anything. So when chlorine radical attack the hydrogen inside the chloroethane, you still form HCl and you form uh, CHCl CH3. So uh, this uh, CHCl CH3 radical will attack another chlorine molecule. So you form a side product of CH3 CH Cl2. So this is one side product. And then imagine if more CH3 CH Cl2 is formed, chlorine radical can again attack the same molecules in here. Okay, you still bring down the step in here. So you form CHCl and CCl2 CH3 radicals. So these CCl2 radicals will still react with chlorine to form more uh, side product of CH3 CCl radical. So there is a possibility to replace all the hydrogens inside the carbons of the ethane molecule. However, this can be overcome by reacting haloalkane with uh, halogen with excess alkane to decrease the probability of a multi-haloalkane. There is also another possibility to form a longer hydrocarbon, okay, uh, where the termination takes place in between two uh, ethyl molecules. So just now we can see that during the process we form ethyl radical. So when two ethyl, ethyl radical terminated, so there is a chance for you to form a butane molecule. The next thing that we're going to have a look is um, what are the probability to form the radicals in different, cat uh, different classifications of the alkene. So it is to say that homolytic dissociation energy also provides us a convenient way to estimate the relative stability of the radicals. So let's together uh, compare the bond energy of this hydrocarbon. So let's say if these organic molecules were to become a radical, so um, I purposely take out this example so that you can see from different angle where this is a primary uh, uh, alkene. This is a secondary alkene and this is a tertiary alkene. So a primary alkene is to say surrounded by 1C, secondary alkene surrounded by 2C, tertiary alkene surrounded by 3C. So if they were to break to become radicals, so this it will form a primary radical, while this will form a secondary radicals, and this will form a tertiary radicals. So it is, it is seems that the formation of a tertiary radicals actually require a lower energy to form. Lower energy means that it is easier to form a tertiary radicals compared to secondary compared to a primary radicals. So uh, similar alkane okay, may form more than one. Okay, so as we described just now, uh, tertiary alkyl radicals is the most stable, followed by secondary to primary. So bond energy increase, so stability of the radical form decrease. So all called alkyl radicals are uncharged, but the hydrocarbon that bears the odd electron is electron division. So in the sense of electron division, alkyl group attached to the carbon provide a stabilizing effect through hyperconjugation, and more alkyl group bonded to it, the more stable the radical it is. Thus for the reason for the relative stability of radical and carbocations are also quite similar. Okay, okay, so with this, that is all for the mechanisms of the reactions. So with this, I finish my second radio for the alkene. Thank you.